the next speaker is uh, dr shweta <coughs> she's going to uh, talk on idiopathic epithelial membrane and its novel association with hyperreflective uh, foci Good afternoon everyone. I am Dr. Shweta. The title of my presentation is Idiopathic Epithelial Membrane and its novel association with hyperreflective foci. We do not have any financial interest. So let's talk about the inception. Uh, it all started when a 65 year old male patient with an NS2 grade cataract presented to us with an idiopathic epithelial membrane. So this was his baseline OCT preoperatively and he had a central macular thickness of 335 microns with a grade 2 ERM. Uh, he underwent a combined uneventful PACO IOL with vitrectomy surgery with ERM peeling. As we can see, the anatomical outcome looks good. The ERM is well peeled. The foveal counter is normalizing. So it is um, but the central macular thickness, to our surprise, increased from 335 microns to 367 microns. And the vest corrected visual acuity dropped by one line. So uh, it led to a lot of commotion. We started wondering what could be the cause for excuse, this uh, ex increase. Excuse me. Did you present this in the last session also? So this was case by case of session one. That was. No, no. Uh, what I was asking is, did you present it the same or it is different? Same. 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 So it's a state new state. Yeah. That yeah. So we will not mark it in this session because it was marked in the last session. But you can present. Okay. Thank you. So this led to a lot of commotion because we started wondering what could be the cause for the drop in vision. And when we went back to the OCT, we saw the uh, we saw a few uh, fine hyperreflective foci. Uh, and we went back. This is a unusual finding because this is not commonly described in ERM. We went back to many other patients' ka OCTs and we found similar findings in many of these patients. So we decided to do a study the normal association of hyperreflective foci with idiopathic epithelial membrane. So we included uh, patients who underwent surgery for idiopathic ERM between Jan 2018 and Jan 2020 with or without adjuvant steroid as per the surgeon's discretion uh, and patients who had follow-up of at least one month. So uh, all OCTs were done on Topcon DRI OCT Triton Plus machine, uh, 12 into 12 mm radial scan centered on the macula with a minimum sound to noise ratio of more than 35 was included and the images were graded by two different assessors independently and the average was taken. So we use the Goveto classification here to grade the ERM. Stage one uh, is the ERM where there's negligible disruption of retinal layers. Stage two, there is stretching of outer retinal layers. Stage three, if the uh, ectopic inner foveal layers have crossed the central fovea. Stage four, where there's disorganized anatomy of macula altogether. Uh, statistical analysis was done. Uh, a p-value of less than 0 0.05 was considered as statistically significant. We had 13 male patients and 11 female patients. Uh, as per the staging concern, five uh, eyes fell into stage two, 14 into stage three, and five in stage four. So the hyperreflective foci, uh, as we can see, increased as we went up the stage, and the central macular thickness also increased as we went up the stage. Um, as we can see in the table here, it, the mean hyperreflective foci is 4.2 in stage two, which increased to about 59.2 in stage four and the central macular thickness also was significantly high as we went up the stage. This was statistically significant. Now I would like to present two cases here. The first case where uh, the pre it's a stage 2 ERM with a preoperative uh, central macular thickness of 304. After one month of uneventful combined PACO IOL with vitrectomy surgery, came out with a uh, central macular thickness having increased to 332 microns, but the best guided visual acuity has improved. On the other hand, we have another case of a much worse condition, stage 4 ERM, with a central macular thickness of 554 at baseline, uh, which improved to 448 at post uh, one month follow-up after a combined phaco vitrectomy surgery. But the key here is the patient also received an intravitreal dexamethasone implant. So we compared these two groups, the group with steroid and without adjuvant steroid, and we saw that the patients who received steroids along with the surgery did better as compared to the other group in terms of reduction in central macular thickness and also in terms of the hyperreflective foci decreasing. 
the graph here shows the hyperreflective foci steeply decreased uh, between one month to three months in the group which received steroids. So what are we trying to interpret here? There's one study which uh, describes hyperreflective foci in idiopathic ERM, but the clinical relevance is not mentioned. There are few studies which advocate the use of steroids in ERM surgery, but we do not have a strong rationale for that. And there are few studies which speak about the role of inflammation in idiopathic ERM. Uh, we feel that our study is the one that connects the dots and gives us a rationale as to why steroids work better because the hyperreflective foci are there and they signify uh, in ongoing inflammation. So we, try, we would like to imply that uh, when there's subclinical inflammation in terms of hyperreflective foci or uh, when there's macular thickening or both, then we would advocate using uh, intravitreal steroids, especially if the ERM is of stage 3 or 4. That way, uh, we'll have a better improvement in the central macular thickness, better visual equity improvement, and we'll have a happy patient at the end of the day.